Hello Blitz fans of all ages, it's me Plum Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at something that Wargaming is uh, going to be doing in the future of Blitz, and that thing is changing, as far as I can tell, the entirety of Tier 10 again. Now, almost a year ago or so, Wargaming did change Tier 10 pretty much entirely, tweaking just about every tank with a few exceptions which includes things like premiums and collectors. And that update overall kind of had like mixed opinions on that one, but whatever the case may have been, that happened in the game, and so tier 10 got changed, and it seems that this year is no exception. Seems like Wargaming's doing it again. So what we're going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be showing some gameplay in the background, and then I'm going to be talking about the American tech tree changes. Now, there are we have access to multiple of the changes for the different tech trees, but for now, I'm just going to be focusing on the American one just to keep this video into a reasonable amount of time, and then as uh, the weeks go on, I can do more and more of these. But either way, without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So, starting with the TU-10E3. So what they're doing with the TU-10E3 is they're taking the reticle calibration consumable, and they're just going to be removing it from the tank, to counter that, they're going to be giving it an increase of hit points up to uh, 1,950 hit points. That's the total hit points. That's not how many hit points they're adding, although that would be kind of funny. But yeah, 900 uh, sorry, 1,950 hit points, and its max speed will be reduced by one kilometer per hour. Now, generally speaking, if we take a look at the votes, you can see that there was a majority of people liking this with 900 and some odd and then uh, I was actually one of the few people that didn't like this. Now, personally, I haven't, don't have like great experience with the T1 T3, mostly just running against it. But on paper, just looking at that, removing a consumable like that and reducing the speed, I just don't think is a terribly fantastic idea. Now, of course, more hit points is cool, but if I'm not mistaken, the T1 T3 isn't like super bad when it comes to armor, so the hit points. Yeah, they can be helpful, but I think for me as a player, just knowing how I like to play things, I probably would prefer to have the consumable. But of course, there is uh, some opinions going on, so it kind of depends. But before we get too caught up on the T1-10E3, let's go ahead and move up on to the T1-10E4. Now with the T1-10E4, the max speed is going to be increasing by 2 kilometers per hour, which is pretty cool. Average damage per shot, however, is going to be reduced by 10 points. Now... That's half of the changes so far. We'll get to the rest in a second. In my opinion, removing alpha in any way usually doesn't sit well with most players, myself included. It just, there's, it's so hard when the alpha of a tank gets hit, especially if it's something like a tank destroyer, because those things are meant to have high alpha. And when you remove alpha, it just doesn't feel quite right, which is why I wanted to bring it up. Now, on top of this, the shell type scheme is also going to be switched to the first uh, shell type being APCR, and then heat, and then HE, and then the shell speed will be adjusted accordingly. So, generally speaking, because of heat, I think that does mean, if it's not heat already, I think that means slower shells. Either way, even with the increased uh, overall speed, or rather the increased max speed, People didn't really like this in general. As you can see, there were some people who liked it, but the majority didn't, myself included. Because uh, in this case, even though I do like faster tanks, stuff like Alpha just really doesn't... I don't like stuff like that to get messed with because it does change more about a tank than you might immediately think about, but it does have an effect. But anyway, that's the T124. Now let's take a look at the M6EO. Now the M6EO is known for being a, a pretty unique looking tank and also a very unique one to play. It is a clipper tank, so you of course get a, depending on what you do, you can get like three or maybe two shots, depending on which gun you go for. And it's a pretty interesting and a pretty strong one as well. I believe last year it got a buff. And it seems, uh, judging by the votes here, that it's actually going to be pretty good. So the turret traverse speed is going to be getting reduced, so it is going to be slower, but to counter this, what they're going to do is the whole traverse speed is and the terrain crossing capacity are actually going to be improved. Now, if you were to ask me which I would prefer, in a heavy tank, I would actually prefer the whole traverse, generally speaking. 
just because I like to be able to deflect shots because that's what a heavy tank is meant for. Of course, the M6Yo isn't the greatest side scraper of all time, but it's a heavy tank and it's certainly going to be better than a light tank, so the Traverse is pretty cool. As well, the emergency track activated, um, the reverse speed will be changed to 7 kilometers per hour. I don't know what it exactly was before, but given that everyone likes it, it must have been increased, so basically the M6Yo. When your track gets broken, you can actually continue to pull backwards, just not as quickly as you would normally. It's actually a really strong mechanic that can kind of get you out of sticky situation if you've lost all of your consumables. So to have that at 7 kilometers per hour, and again, considering that your tracks are broken, it's actually pretty good speed to be pulling backwards at. It's not fast, but all things considered, that's pretty good. And like everyone else, I do think that this is... It's a nice change. I don't know that this is a balanced change. I think this might actually be an overpowered change, but either way, it's a nice one to have, especially if you like the M6Yo, because it does seem like it's going to be getting better. The Concept 1B. The Concept 1B is a collector tank. Therefore, it shouldn't really ever be modified, but Wargaming has done this once, and they're going to do it again, apparently. And I don't think too many people liked the original change. I do think it technically nerfed the tank a little bit, depending on the way you look at it. But uh, in this case, the reload time, shell speed, and max reverse speed get reduced. So basically, shell reload time, okay, you're going to be able to reload faster, but your shell speed being reduced, I'm not a fan of slow shells. I don't necessarily know how fast the Concept 1B is, but any kind of decrease is probably going to be felt in one way or another. And of course, max reverse speed getting decreased, that really inhibits your ability to pull out of a position. And again, considering that a tank, a very good tank like the M6Yo is getting the buff that it is, to be getting a decrease like this, like let's say for example, just throwing this out there, you have a Concept 1B and you're going to be going up an M6 uh, up against an M6Yo. You are not going to be able to reverse as quickly, which means that the M6Yo is going to be able to push onto you theoretically and dump its whole shell, or rather its whole clip into you, and that just doesn't do great. And this is just an example. Any clipper tank really could do this. So getting a decreased reverse speed, especially in a heavy tank, is never really all that fun. Now, emergency track mechanics will be enabled. I believe, yes. So basically, now the Concept 1B is going to have what the M6CO is going to have, where if it tracks its track gets broken, it's going to be able to pull backwards anyway. But still, reducing your reverse speed as a whole just for that mechanic... I honestly still think I'd probably prefer to be able to pull back quicker and maybe avoid getting my track broken, period. But yeah, not a great change for the Concept 1B, which is actually unfortunate because a lot of people spent a lot of money on that tank and it does seem like it's uh, not getting uh, the most favorable changes here. Next is the T125. Now, I have the T125. I've played the T125 and I actually, while I'm not very good in that particular tank, Considering I like the shark, I do like the playstyle of the tank, so I really do wish that Wargaming would kind of leave it alone, because it seems to me, over the past couple of years, it has received balance changes probably three, four times or something like that. It's actually quite a bit, and I could be wrong. It may be more, maybe less, but I don't think so. Either way, turret armor, terrain crossing capacity and tur uh, traverse speed are going to be improved. So turret armor, of course, for a T125 is pretty cool because it's a hold down uh, tank, and I do like strong armor. As well, the uh, traverse speed being improved, that's also pretty cool because you are going to be able to maintain more even speeds. The hull armor is going to become weaker. Now, this is where this is not so great of an update. Now, I get it. Hold down tank, turret should be strong, the rest of you, not so much, but the T110E5 isn't exactly known for its strong hull armor, and the fact that it's going to be getting weaker is not terribly fantastic, because that lower plate does generally get hit, especially by someone with some good gun depression. Reactive armor consumable is also going to be getting removed, so 
if someone does hit you, you can't even kind of prevent that by having that uh, consumable that reduces the amount of damage that people can do to you as well. Armor penetration is reduced by four millimeters and the reload time is decreased by just a smidge over a second. So slightly faster reload, four millimeters of penetration being reduced. Overall, I mean, I can see arguments for this being one way or the other. I mean, obviously there's some people that like this change and I do like the reload decrease, but I'm not a huge fan of the penetration decrease nor the armor getting weaker because yes, while it is a hold down tank, it's not meant to be hold down all of the time. So you do want to have some armor just to kind of help with that. So overall, this update is uh, not terribly fantastic, but I will say I, I don't want to like completely complain about it because a uh, uh, decreased reload is also really cool. Moving on, however, to the T57 Heavy, the interclip reload time is increased by 2.88 seconds. This is the first change happening to the T57 Heavy, and that is already a major oof. That is nearly three extra seconds to wait for your whole clip to reload, which is very painful. Now, granted, it is a clipper tank, so technically speaking, you're going to not feel that as much, but still, three seconds, just shy of three seconds, I shouldn't really say three, it's not quite there, but still, 2.9-ish seconds is a long time to be added to your reload, and yeah, that is still going to be felt even if you don't really think about it all the time. Turret and hull armor is changed, some armor parts are become thicker and some get thinner. Very descriptive, uh, I don't know if that means the turret's going to be getting better and that the hull armor is going to be weaker. Given what happened, what's happening with the T-125, that may be the case. Uh, the T-57 Heavy could probably stand to have a little bit thicker turret armor, especially if it's going to be having a reload increase of that amount. But yeah, not real great. Armor penetration is also being decreased by 6 millimeters, and then the HP count increases to 2,400. So more hit points less penetration, longer reload, and who knows what changes to the armor. Overall, not a very good update for the T57 Heavy. And that's honestly not super cool, which is why I'm kind of with everyone else saying that this is probably not a great increase or not going to be a great change for the T57 Heavy. M60 um, actually hardly gets touched other than maximum speed is increased by two kilometers per hour. Woohoo, yay. That's literally all there is to talk about the M60. Just it's getting faster. What's not to like? I don't know how people think that this is something to d dislike. Kind of funny, but uh, there are less than 100 people that are disliking this and uh, 1,400 people like this, which kind of tells me this is probably a good change. And especially considering that there's literally no negatives. And it just occurs to me, I've been talking probably just as much about the M60 that had one change than I did some of these other tanks. But anyway, moving on to the M48 Patton. The turret armor will be... Oh, wait a minute. It just occurred to me. M60, that's a premium tank, right? I think so. So that's probably why nothing negative is happening to it. Anyway, back to what I was saying. M48 Patton, turret armor will be improved. That's cool. The decreased um, parameters are average damage per shot. So... Uh, average damage per shot is getting decreased. Okay, that is something to be careful of because that will affect uh, how much damage you can do, of course, by 10 points. Uh, armor penetration is going to be decreased by 7 millimeters, and the reload time is going to be uh, decreased by 0.29 uh, seconds. Two yeah. So basically, just to kind of squish this all into one thing, basically what's happening is the turret armor is getting better. That's great. Uh, the average damage is being decreased by 10 points. The penetration is going to be uh, decreased by 7 millimeters. I don't know why the penetration decreases on all of the American tanks for some reason. I have uh, never really thought of American tanks as having too much penetration, if you ask me. But uh, reload time being decreased as well does kind of help to balance that a little bit. Now, unlike a tank destroyer, I can kind of get behind alpha changes on a medium because while that is 10 points less, the faster reload does mean you can actually shoot at more targets. And generally speaking, when you're in a medium or even really a light tank as well, to be able to shoot more targets at once is 
in my personal experience, generally a little bit better, but still, it is something to keep in mind, and it's, it's definitely going to change the way that this tank plays. Now, they are changing the Sheridan, and not in a good way, apparently, because the view range is going to be set to 265. Um, I didn't look up the stats beforehand. I do wish, kind of wish that Wargaming told me whether this was an increase or decrease, Either way, 265 to me doesn't sound like an insane view range. I'm thinking of some heavies that probably have like 220, 240. So yeah, it's definitely longer than a heavy, but I don't know. It seems to me like that's just a, a good amount, not necessarily a crazy ton, but I could be wrong. Um, shell speed and aiming time are going to be reduced. That's um, okay, so slower shell better aim time but just overall just kind of like a messy change to the Sheridan which is why I'm not like a huge fan of it the Sheridan really doesn't stand out as OP so it really doesn't need to be limited anymore there are some people that may completely disagree with me on that one but personally speaking from what I've seen the Sheridan is um it's it's not what I would classify as OP, and I do apologize if I said Sheridan Missile in there somewhere. Sheridan Missile is not being changed as far as I'm to what I'm aware. There's no reason to change that. It's just the Tech Tree Sheridan. Wanted to clarify just in case I messed up somewhere. But anyway, moving on to the last tank of this video, the T95E6. So the armor penetration is going to be decreased by 8 millimeters. Again, there we go. With the decreased penetration with these American tanks. I don't really understand that. Maybe with some like in crazy high penetration, like maybe lowering the Hesh penetration on an FV-183 I could maybe see, but on American tanks, I just don't really see them as having like overpowered penetration, so lowering that it's not really my favorite. Reload time gets uh, to be 0.38 seconds shorter, so that is of course very nice. Terrain crossing capacity is improved, so, you know, generally speaking, keeping your speed a little bit more solidly. And then combat stabilization mechanics will be added. Um, overall, if we take a look at the votes on here real quick, I'm just going to take a look. Overall, there's been a 2 negative, uh, 1 positive, 3, 4, 5 negative, a 2, 3 positive. Yeah, overall, when it comes to the American tech tree, not a very... Not a large amount of fun or very nice uh, changes. For the most part, it's kind of looking like a bit of a downer when it comes to the American tech tree. But of course, time will tell. And as you can see here, Wargaming is technically giving people the option to vote whether or not they like something or not. So who knows? Maybe this will maybe have some sort of way on their uh, their changes. Maybe, maybe not. But either way, it is kind of nice to, at the very least, as another player in the community, to see, generally speaking, what everyone thinks of these changes. But anyway, that does conclude the video. I've now gone over the changes, or at least the current state of the changes, for the American Tech Tree. Not sure exactly when these changes will take effect, but with that, I do hope you all enjoyed, and as always, have fun, good luck, and happy tanking.